You've really got to hand it to the judges out there for being able to stay calm and deal with Karens like this. Ma'am! Ma'am! At least, most of them, that is. One Karen on this list is actually a magistrate himself. Now, let's get right into the crazy Karens messing up their court hearings big time. First up today, this Karen owns a diner that didn't follow COVID safe rules. She continued to willfully violate the state's food laws, public health orders, and the order of the court, which led her to sitting right here. Ma'am, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, all truth? And nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury. I would like to call. Ma'am! Ma'am, stop! I know you want to control this room, but this isn't Burger King. When the sign changes to Burger King, you can have it your way. Right now, this is my courtroom, and you will answer my questions. Ma'am, stop! Do you? Promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury. Yes or no? Are you going to tell the truth? All right, I'll take that as silence. I understand her attorney is on here. Where is her attorney? He's the big Again, say anything again without telling me you're going to tell the truth, and I will hold you in contempt of court for 93 days. Nine, contempt carries with it 93 days and or $7,500. You will not act disrespectful in this court. Her behavior landed her a $7,500 fine and 93 days in jail for contempt of court. Next, a lady was sentenced to 3 to 15 years in prison after driving under the influence and causing a fatal crash, killing a father of six, along with injuring the mother. The victim's family is also in the courtroom, and as a victim impact statement written by the children of the now deceased father is read, the convicted woman's mother can be heard laughing. Check out how the judge handles this situation. Casal has been found guilty of driving under the influence, causing a head-on collision that killed 31-year-old Jerome Zerker and severely injured his fiancée, 31-year-old Brittany Johnson. Prior to sentencing, the court will hear a powerful impact statement from the victim's children, read by his sister, Doreen Zerker. Amanda, look what you did to my life. You ruined everything I had, like my dad's life. Amanda seems devastated by Doreen's words. But Judge Kiana Lillard apparently hears some snickering from Casal's family sitting in the gallery. That's the defendant's mother, Donna Casal. Ma'am, you are being taken into custody for criminal contempt. Your disruptive and disrespectful behavior disrupted today's proceedings, and you, ma'am, are going to the Wayne County Jail for 93 days for direct criminal contempt. Anybody else want to go? Try it. After orders restored, Amanda Casal is sentenced. It'll be the sentence of this court that you will serve three to 15 years in the Michigan Department of Corrections. If there's nothing further, that concludes this matter. After a night in jail, the not so remorseful mother appears in front of the same judge and had this to say. As for Amanda's mother, Donna, she spends the night in jail and appears before Judge Lillard the next morning. Donna seems to have learned a serious lesson from just one night behind bars. Ms. Cousins, is yes. there something you'd like to say? Yes, I deeply apologize for what I did. I was under a lot of stress. And I deeply apologize for what I did in your court. I just needed to get out. And it's been very hard for me <laughs> this year, and I know for the other family, and I'm so sorry for what I did, and I know it was wrong, and I apologize. Her apology seemed to have worked as she was let home the same day. Next, we have Michael Backman, an Ohio magistrate, abusing his powers to the maximum. He was presiding over a trial when he heard a commotion coming from the hallway. The commotion was coming from Cassandra Jackson, and she was allegedly screaming at the top of her lungs because she had been told she was 30 minutes late to file court papers. The judge then walks out and takes matters into his own hands. Hey, you, get back here. That's a magistrate in full judicial robe storming out of his courtroom and chasing down a woman. Watch as he takes off after her, running through the hallways. When he finally catches up with her, he orders her back to his courtroom. And when she makes a wrong turn, he puts the long arm of the law on her shoulder, steering her in the correct direction. Inside his courtroom in Cincinnati, the magistrate sits the woman down in the jury box and then proceeds to sentence her to three days in jail for disrespectful and disruptive behavior. 
After the incident, this Karen of a judge was forced to resign and Cassandra was released after two days in jail. Moving on now, not all Karens are white, entitled, middle-aged women. Some are young and entitled, like this girl in court here. This girl's either stupid spoiled, on drugs, or both. After smiling and laughing throughout her whole hearing, she says adios to the judge as it comes to an end. So the judge calls her back and doubles her $5,000 fine, making it $10,000. After hearing this, she turns around, swears out, and flips the judge off. In relation to her disrespect, the judge then hands her 30 days in jail. Minnesota, you're being charged with possession of Sanax, uh, B-A-R-S, I don't know what that is. What is bars. that? Bars. Xanax, Xanax bars. That's how they refer to them. Xanax bars. Okay, and do you own any property of value, a house, a car, bank account, significant amounts of jewelry? Yes. What do you own? <laughs> I own a lot of jewelry, all right. Well, how, um, how, how, how much you, would you say your jewelry is worth? <laughs> it's not a joke, you know, we are not in, we are not in a club now. Be serious about it. I'm serious about oh, it. You're being you just very, I can see you're serious, all right. It's worth Ma'am, money. Have you had any kind of drugs in the, in the last 24 hours? Actually, no. Bye-bye. Adios. <laughs> Come back, ma'am. Come back. Come back. Give me the paper again. Oh. Gun one would be 10,000. Are you serious? I am serious. Adios. <gasps> Come back again. Peter, what are you doing? Crack. Come back again. Bring him back again. I believe I heard you saying to... Yes, I did. I'm not going to I, I believe you... Did you say... Actually, I did. did. you say that? Yes, sir. Oh, you did say that? I find you in direct criminal contempt. 30 days in the county jail. Today's final Karen is Karen Stevens. Karen had an ongoing feud with her previous attorney, Paul Nicoletti. Karen claimed that Nicoletti had petitioned the court for a personal protection order against her over accusations of stalking. So Karen's here to fight the order. Find the case of Nicoletti versus Stevens. Case number 0672178 Good afternoon, Judge. Karen Stevens in pro per for my motion for sanctions against Mr. Nicoletti for this uh, vexatious and frivolous PPO. I'm sorry, on this what? I have a motion for sanctions against I know Mr. that. And the purpose of the sanctions are, are based on what? It was a frivolous and vexatious PPO based on nonsense. I am not stalking Mr. Because Nicoletti. I haven't signed a PPO. If you didn't catch that, the personal protection order that Karen is referring to hasn't even been issued yet. His petition for a PPO. I, okay, I'm, let me... Okay, were you served? No, I wasn't, but may... I... No, you may not. How can you ask to sanction someone when you haven't even been served? That's the point. He Stevens, do not, do not interrupt me when I'm speaking, ma'am. I have a constitutional right to be heard. Had I issued a PPO, you would have a basis to be before me. I did not issue a PPO. He did not pursue his right to a hearing on the PPO. You were never served, and here you are taking up my time so that you want me to chastise him and, quite, and make him pay money? No, ma'am. Your belief is denied, and in addition to that, I am sanctioning you with cost $500. Thank you, Ronnie. I knew it was fixed. I beg your pardon? I knew it was fixed. This story, however, doesn't end here. Due to a clerical error, Karen is back before Judge Anderson once again, four months later. When the clerk's office attempted to correct the mistake they made, you basically objected to your credit card company, and that brings you here today. Do you have the $495 that this is the balance owed? But I did file an objection and an answer to this order to show cause that wasn't properly served, didn't have an affidavit of merit. Um, Ms. Stevens, do you have $495 with which to pay today? I just said I have my credit card. I do not have cash. Very well then, Ms. Stevens. You may go down to the clerk's office, pay $495 forthwith to take care of the $500 that this court assessed you the last time you were here. I'm entitled to know what uh, statutes or court rules you rely on to uh, sanction me in the first place. That's part of due process. 
After all this, Karen was not only ordered to pay the $500 in court fees, but Nicoletti's attorney fees as well. Unlucky Karen, karma just really is a bit.